Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and today we are going to be taking a closer look at my 2017 Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray. Let's do this. This is a Music Man Stingray, clearly. But this is actually a 2017, which means it is the last year of the standard Music Man Stingray, featuring the 9-volt preamp, the Alnico pickup, this uh, Stingray-style bridge, the regular bridge that's now seen on the Sterling by Music Man uh, Ray 34 and Ray 24, at least the style. And uh, yeah, a 21 fret neck as opposed to the 22 that is on the Stingray Special. This particular example is actually my first Stingray, well, my first real Stingray anyways. I had a few OLPs in high school and college, but this one I purchased, I want to say, two months before I started the channel, and it was definitely an interesting experience versus uh, playing something like a jazz bass or a P bass. A Stingray tone is very distinct and very unique. So this bass has a selected hardwoods, it's basically ash, I believe, uh, ash body, uh, with a fire mist yellow or fire mist gold finish. This was a finish that was only offered in the 2017 models, as well as a fire mist purple. We have black hardware all around uh, at the bridge and at the headstock, and we have a matching finish at the headstock as well. The neck and fingerboard are maple, however a rosewood option was available at least on these uh, 2017 and pre-2017 Stingrays. The neck is a 21 fret 34 inch scale maple on maple neck with a 41.3 millimeter nut width and the Ernie Ball compensated nut. This is only found on the USA Stingrays and the USA Music Man bases, at least on the modern bases. I know the Stingray Classic does not have the compensated nut. The fingerboard radius is around 11 inches, which is on the flatter side, though it's not like super flat, like what you would find on a Warwick or an Ibanez or something. Uh, yeah, so overall very comfortable neck. And one of my favorite features of all, we have a truss rod wheel down at the heel of the neck. I always appreciate when you uh, have one there because it's just so easy to adjust the neck versus needing a proprietary Allen wrench or a special uh, key or something to get in there. All you need is anything that really fits in the little hole there that won't break. <laughs> and you can adjust your neck on the go. So I think this is the best truss rod adjustment method out there, and I always appreciate when basses have that. And I like the styling of this bass a lot with the black hardware and just the blacked out look with the Fire Mist Gold finish. Now keep in mind, Fender also uses the name Fire Mist Gold, and it's a completely different color that is much more gold. This is very much a uh, metallic-y kind of pearl yellow. It's, it's a beautiful color, honestly. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's go ahead and turn this base around real quick. Around back, we see the single 9-volt battery compartment. That is one way you can tell a Stingray from a Stingray Special. The Stingray Special has an 18-volt preamp, where the regular Stingrays have a 9-volt, so you only see a single battery compartment here. We also find a 6-volt neck attachment as opposed to the 5 on the Stingray Special. So this is a completely different neck heel, and again, we have one less fret versus the Stingray Special as well. Uh, but overall, this is a pretty standard Stingray layout. Very nice. And we see the back of the neck as well. This is finished in the signature oil and gunstock wax uh, finish that they do on the Music Man bases. Uh, it's a very nice finish overall. Very easy to play, and it's very, very smooth. I enjoy the Music Man necks, though in my opinion, I really like my Stingray Classic neck better. Uh, I'm not really much of a, a full gloss person, but that Stingray Classic neck is, mwah, it's absolutely something else. We'll be seeing more of the Stingray Classic a little bit later in this video. Uh, spoiler alert, what have I done? Now how much does my 2017 Music Man Stingray weigh? This particular example comes in at 9.2 pounds. Stingrays are generally known for being pretty heavy, however it seems these later examples seem to have gotten the weight under control. That being said, moving up to the Stingray Special, those are usually in the 8-pound range. Uh, the ones that I've had were extremely lightweight. It was in 
fact, pretty impressive. <laughs> this one's actually 7.2 pounds. But yeah, not too bad overall. Very comfortable bass to play. Much lighter than my Sterling by Music Man Ray 34 Ash, which is 11 and a half pounds. So this is uh, definitely easy on the shoulders relative to that. <laughs> and how much does the 2017 Music Man Stingray cost? You can find examples of uh, bases in this particular era around 2011 to 2017 for anywhere between like $1,000 to $2,000. And above and below that, the range is pretty wide and they come in a variety of conditions, believe me. <laughs> this one is, however, a very, very, uh, was a mint example. I only put one, one little small ding on it by accident and I was very sad about that for a long time. But the 2011 to 2017 Music Man Stingrays are not really hard to come by. You can find them pretty easily. The used market is a crazy place right now, so your mileage may vary, but yeah, the, the range is pretty wide. Now I know you're all wondering, well, what does this bass sound like? You all know what you need to do? Go ahead and push that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. So this is it, my 2017 Music Man Stingray in this beautiful Fire Mist Gold. So what you've heard is with the preamp center, and you definitely get that bite and sizzle that the Stingrays are known for. Here, let's play it a little bit more. So that is the tone you can expect from this style of Stingray. An absolutely uh, bitey tone that will chop through any mix. It's very, very, uh, not piercing, because that sounds like it's a bad thing, but uh, very treble heavy and very, you know, high mid heavy. You get a lot of snap. <laughs> Anyways, so the preamp has been centered this whole time. We have a three band preamp here, as opposed to the two band preamp that you find in the Stingray Classic. So completely different preamp style and construction. The Classic is geared towards the uh, original iteration of the Stingray. It also has, you know, the mute bridge and a full gloss neck. This is the last iteration of the modern Stingray before we go to the Stingray Special. Three band preamp with center uh, detents where the special does not have that. And uh, yeah, it's honestly a, a great bass. However, one thing that we did note is that you essentially get almost like 90 ish percent of what you see here in the Ray 34, which is can be found for, you know, $600 to $800 or so brand new. And yeah, let's start playing with this preamp a little bit. I'm going to turn down the treble and turn down the mids all the way. We're going to leave the bass at center. Here's what that sounds like. Mm -hmm. 
So even with just the bass at center and the mids and the highs cut, you still get a lot of definition and clarity in the tone. It sounds really nice. Now let's boost the bass to around 50%, see how that sounds. Let's go ahead and take the bass down all the way and bring the mids up to center now, leaving the treble and the bass cut. Here's what that sounds like. So the mids are where most of the body of the, the tone lives. You're getting a lot of, uh, it seems to be focusing more on the high mids if you listen to it. Or somewhat high mid heavy in my opinion. Uh, let's go ahead and boost those about 50%, leaving the bass and the treble cut. So this is essentially the anti-mid scoop. The mids come back for revenge. Sorry, I'm like flicking everybody off. <laughs> was not intentional, was not intentional. Now let's take those mids down and we're going to bring the treble up to center, leaving the bass and the mids at full cut. <laughs> That is the Stingray tone that we know. That is the treble tone. That is the voice of the Stingray that we all know and love. The snap, the bite, that's what a Stingray is all about. And you definitely get that here in the 2017 Stingray. That being said, I do prefer the two band preamp and uh, I'll go over why a little bit later in this video and we might do a little bit of a side to side comparison. But for now, let's take the treble up to about 50%. And let's take the bass up to about 50% as well. 50% booth up, 50% booth. 50% boost on the treble and the bass.
So that's kind of more of what I expect from a Stingray tonally, something like this. And once we add the mids into the mix, you definitely get an uh, even more distinct Stingray voice. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and center the EQ here. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take our pick out, play it with a pick a little bit. Very nice, very nice. In my opinion, I think the high mids and the treble are a bit aggressive in the center position for this bass. Let's leave the bass centered and take the mids down about 50% uh, cut and the treble, uh, let's do about 50% cut as well. In my early videos, I referred to something like this as the lobster tone because I just really enjoyed this particular EQ setting when it came to this bass and other uh, Music Man 3-band preamps. So here's what that sounds like here. And with this tone here, I'm going to go ahead and give it a little slap. Great slap tone on a Stingray. I mean, these things are known for slap. Louis Johnson, Flea, a lot of slappers love their Stingrays for slapping, including me. <laughs> so now let's talk about tone and why I think that the Stingray Classic is a better Stingray than the Stingray. So I think the Stingray Classic, in my opinion, dials in the Stingray tone a bit better with the two-band preamp. You can really just, you know, boost the low end or boost the high end, and I've never really found a need for a mid control in my Stingray Classic. And I think this mid control here only complicates things. I know I love complicated setups in some bases, however, in a Stingray, I think the two-band setup is best, in my opinion. So we are going to do a little bit of a tone comparison with my 2017 Music Man Stingray, as well as my Music Man Stingray Classic, which is a 2020 or 2021. Uh, anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to have the preamp centered for one round. We are going to have the preamp in my favorite configuration for a second round, and then we're going to do it all again with a little bit of slap. And the first run is going to be finger style. We're also going to have our beat buddy in the background for that one as well. Let's get started. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So as I mentioned, this two band preamp, I think fits the Stingray character a lot more appropriately than the three band uh, in the more modern Stingrays. I mean, just listen to this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this has everything you want. You want more bottom end? Turn up the bass knob. Turn down the treble. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> or you want more snappiness? Take the bass down a little bit. Crank up the treble and you got... <laughs> <laughs> and you can just, you know, go nuts with these two controls. There's no center detent. It's all up to you and your preferences. And I just think that this is perfect. Absolute perfection. I know I gave it a four out of five claw, but it, it's perfect. This, this is my favorite Stingray. I love this thing so much. <laughs> Speaking of slap, or slapping of slap, uh, I was going to do a little slap comparison here. So I'm going to put the preamp at 50% on both bases, and we will do a quick side-by-side -side slap off. Let's do it. So as you can see, this 2017 Stingray is no slouch. However, it's probably also evident why the Stingray Classic is my favorite Stingray. So the 2017 is kind of in a weird spot because the Stingray Special is a better, well-rounded bass in my opinion and much more usable uh, in a wider variety of genres, just my opinion. And then you have the Stingray Classic, which is just the best Stingray. Like, the best real, true, classic, just like they used to make them kind of Stingray. And I absolutely love that bass. That is, it's one of my, like, top five favorites, like, of all my collection. I just love that thing. The only reason it's not up on the wall is because I play it way too much, and it's also really heavy, and I'm afraid. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty secure with these wall mounts here. Uh, these are these are really good, so I, I'm not worried. I'm just joking, but it is a heavy bass. It's a very heavy bass. <laughs> so I guess that covers me putting drums behind it already. Uh, let's just play it a little bit more. <laughs> Thank you. 
this is a great instrument. This is... These, these are special basses, the USA ones. Though the Sterling by Music Man, you know, Ray 34s, as I said, can sound like 90 to 95% identical to this. These are still just special. <laughs> you can't like quantify it or like, I can't show it. Like, oh, look how special, Here, here's the special r right here. But like, th th there's something special in, in these. So yeah. <laughs> So here are my final thoughts on my 2017 Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray. These are awesome basses. They're pretty much all on the used market now. You really can't find these new. They occasionally pop up on new old stock. And then from the Ernie Ball Music Man Vault, you can find uh, this style of Stingray sometimes available. But outside of that, the old 9-volt Stingray has been put out to pasture. And uh, yeah, they're special instruments for sure. They're not the best Stingray. I think the Stingray Classic and the Stingray Special both fill different shoes, but these are definitely uh, an iconic Stingray and uh, one that inspired quite a, a few musicians, <laughs> myself included. So yeah, that's what I think about the 2017 Music Man Stingray. Let me know what you all think about this bass in the comments down below. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord channel, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about my 2017 Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray. And as always, until we groove again.